I'm Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft and thank you very much for joining me for my latest video which is all about upcycling. So I really love an upcycling project, I find them a lot of fun and in this video I'm going to share with you three of my previous upcycling projects I've done. One is a sewing project and two are dressmaking projects and hopefully they might give you some ideas or inspiration if you're thinking about doing a bit of upcycling yourself. And then I'm also going to be talking about a new challenge that's running here on YouTube and over on Instagram. It's an upcycling sewing challenge um, that lots of sewing vloggers are getting involved in and I'm really looking forward to taking part. And I'm going to share my plans or what I think I'd like to do as an upcycling project for that challenge. So I'll start off this video by sharing details of the challenge that I'm taking part in and it is called hashtag sew upcycle 22 and it's being run by two really lovely ladies who are also sewing vloggers here on YouTube and they are Karen whose um, YouTube channel is So Little Time and Becky whose YouTube channel is Notes in the Sewing Room and I'll link both of their channels down below and I'll pop up a few details of the challenge and what Sew Upcycle 22 involves. Basically you need to make a upcycled garment using some fabric that is not new and it can be a whole range of things. You could use an old bed sheet or an old curtain. You could use an old piece of ready to wear clothing, something you've got from a charity shop or an old handmade item that you'd like to maybe tweak a bit. Then you need to take a photo of what the fabric or garment looked like before and after you upcycled it. And then once you finish your project, you need to post it on Instagram on the 31st of October using the hashtag SewUpCycle22 and tagging Becky and Karen. So it looks like it's going to be a really fun project and it definitely got me thinking when they asked me if I'd like to be involved. And then I had a look back and started thinking about my previous upcycling projects and I realised I'd done more of them than I thought and I do really love an upcycling project because I think it's a great way of getting creative and also it's a great way of making use of something that has been maybe sitting around not being as loved as it should have been. So I'm going to share with you three of my previous upcycling projects to hopefully give some inspiration before I talk about my ideas for the Sew Up Cycle Challenge. Oh, and I should also mention there's a whole schedule of vloggers that are recording videos through the month of October and talking about their plans for Sew Up Cycle 22. So if you use the Sew Up Cycle 22 hashtag on YouTube, you should be able to find all of those videos that are happening through this month. And anyone can get involved in the challenge, you don't have to be a sewing vlogger, all you need to do is have an Instagram account so you can post the before and after pictures on the 31st of October. So I thought I'd move on now to sharing with you the three upcycling projects that I thought I'd include in this video to try and give some ideas and inspiration as they're ones that I've really enjoyed. And the first project is not actually a dressmaking project, it's a sewing project, but it's one that I thought was a really um, great sort of starter project if you're thinking about doing a bit of upcycling. And basically I turned an old duvet cover into some bunting. Um, it was my first time making bunting and I made this bunting earlier this year for my daughter's birthday. She is not a fan of balloons but I wanted to do something to decorate the house as an alternative to balloons to make it look a bit pretty and special for her birthday. So I thought I'd try my hand at bunting and it's not something I'd tried before but it turned out to be a lot more straightforward than I thought um, and it was really fun actually, quite a nice mindful sewing project that had quite a lot of repetition in it um, and came together really nicely. So for my bunting I decided to recycle an old duvet cover and it used to be um, the cot bed cover on my daughter's bed before she moved into her big bed so it had a bit of sentimental value to it and I just sort of folded it up when she got too big for it and popped it in our airing cupboard and it was just sort of sitting there unused but I thought the fabric was really pretty so I thought I'd see if I could squeeze some bunting out of it and it worked really well actually because being a duvet cover even though it was a small duvet cover there was quite a lot of space so plenty of room to make a decent amount of bunting to pop up in our house so I'll show you the fabric and the bunting I made and here it is so as you can see it's a really sweet fabric with this sort of pale cotton base and these lovely roses on and I just got some white bias binding to finish it off and I made quite a lot of bunting a couple of rows of it to go on a couple of windows in our house it was a really simple project and it was so lovely to use this fabric so now we can get it out on special occasions. My daughter really loved it and I think she'll be happy to have it up next year and I think as a project bunting is great for decorating a bedroom as well. I think it'll be really pretty hanging up in a bedroom so a great use of some old cotton fabric I think which is perfect for upcycling in some pretty bunting. So the next two upcycling projects I've got to share are both dressmaking projects where I took an item from a handmade wardrobe that I'd made but wasn't really reaching for at all and upcycled it to turn it into something a lot more wearable that I'm reaching for a lot more. 
And I had a lot of fun with both of these projects, actually. I really enjoyed getting the garments out and thinking critically about them and thinking about what it was about them was making me not reach for them. And then planning how I could then alter them to turn them into something that would get a lot more love. And the first one is a skirt that I made originally using this pattern here, which is the S3 skirt pattern by So Liberated. It's a pattern I really love and I've made a few times now, but the first version I made didn't really go to plan and that's the one I ended up upcycling. So I'll share details of the skirt pattern itself and then I'll share why it didn't really work out the first time around when I made it. But it's a really nice skirt pattern. It's a gathered skirt and it has a flat fronted waistband and then elastic at the back. So you can just pull it on and off. It also features a button placket at the front, but you can make it as a faux placket because the elastic means, yeah, you can just pull the skirt on and off. You don't actually have to open the buttons. You make it in different lengths and there are two pocket options. You can either make a patch pocket or an inseam pocket. And it's a pattern that comes together really nicely and I really enjoy wearing my versions. But my first version, yeah, didn't go quite to plan. So I ended up making quite a few alterations to it and upcycling it into a garment that I do now get a lot more wear out of. So the first version I made, I think the thing I went wrong with was the fabric choice. I chose a cotton linen blend fabric, which is a really lovely, nice quality fabric that I originally, I think, got from Fabric Godmother. But it was quite bulky and so when I sewed it up into the estuary skirt the elasticated waist at the back turned out really too bulky with that fabric and it didn't really sit quite right as a result. I also decided to make the estuary skirt in a midi length which is a new length for me at the time and I think the combination of the bulky waistband and the midi length made it feel a bit frumpy, it didn't really feel quite me and I wasn't really getting it out at all. So I decided to have a think about how I could change it to make it in something that I get a lot more wear out of. So I altered it and changed it quite a bit and here is my upcycled skirt. So as you can see the first thing I did was chop off the length to turn it from a midi skirt into a mini skirt um, which feels a bit more my style and because it's quite a nice cosy fabric it makes quite a nice sort of winter mini skirt with some black tights and a pair of black boots. So that was quite an easy alteration but I also needed to fix the waistband issue. So what I did was I unpicked the old waistband with the elastic at the back and I borrowed the waistband for a different pattern, which is a Megan Nielsen Brumby skirt pattern, which features a really nice fitted contoured waistband. So I borrowed that instead, and I used some of the fabric that I cut off from the bottom of the skirt to use for my new waistband. And here is my new waistband at the front and the back, and I think it just works so much better with this fabric. And because the fabric is all gathered in, it was quite easy to fit the skirt pattern pieces to the new waistband. And because um, it's a fitted waistband, that meant I had to then change the button placket to make it into an actual functioning button placket rather than a faux placket so I could get the skirt on and off. So I now have functioning buttons to get the skirt on and off and it just works a lot better like that. I also adjusted the pockets slightly as well and um, because I was making it into a mini skirt, I made the pockets a bit smaller too so they'd fit with the whole shape of the smaller, shorter skirt. And this was actually a double upcycle project because as well as actually upcycling the whole skirt itself, I used some fabric left over for a pair of old pyjamas for my husband to um, finish the facing on the inside of the waistband. Because this fabric's a little bit bulky, um, I thought it might be too much to have two layers of the cotton linen blend for the waistband, so I used this fabric, and it was from a pair of pyjamas my husband had worn to death, really. They were quite tatty, but there was enough fabric to salvage from them to use for this facing, so I was quite pleased to use that because it's nice, soft, lightweight cotton. It works really well for the inside of this waistband. So this is my refashioned estuary skirt. I reach for a lot more now, it feels a lot more me, and there was a lot of fun actually figuring out how to sort of change it up too. And I'll put a picture up of what the skirt looked like before, and then also what the skirt looked like after, so you can see the difference. Yeah, I'm really glad I spent the time upcycling it because I definitely get a lot more wear out of it now. So the next upcycle dressmaking project that I wanted to share is another handmade garment where I made it using a fabric I really loved and a pattern I really loved too, but it was one I wasn't really reaching for at all in my wardrobe. So I decided to get it out and have a think about how I could alter it and upcycle it to turn in something that I'd be reaching for a lot more. And it's a dress I made using this pattern here, which is the Honeycomb Shirt and Dress Pattern by Kokoara Crafts. I'll show you the line drawings of this pattern. It's got some really pretty details to it. It's a shirt dress, I've always made the dress version, with a gathered skirt and a button down front and a band collar. It's got pretty panelling detail on the front bodice and the back bodice has a yoke which you make using the burrito technique, so quite a nice neat technique. And you can make it either with sleeves, long sleeve or short sleeve or sleeveless. And the detail I really love on this dress is the fact that you sew into the panels two waist ties and the waist ties pull in each side to create these little pretty bows at the edges and give it a bit of shape too. So it's a really nice pattern and I'd actually made two versions of the summer 
dress version, this one, the sleeveless version before. And I got a lot of wear out of those, but I thought it'd be really fun to make a winter version of this pattern too. And I had some lovely fabric in mind, this really beautiful um, brushed viscose twill fabric, which is really soft and snuggly. And it's got this lovely sort of green base with these white flowers. And I thought it was a really pretty, lovely print. Quite a large scale floral print, which is not something I always go for. So I decided to make a long sleeve version of the honeycomb dress. I did adjust the sleeve slightly from the pattern because the pattern has little bows on the ends of the sleeves. And I wasn't sure if I'd find that quite practical. I thought I'd probably get them caught on door handles or I'd dip them in sort of soup or that sort of thing. Um, so I made a slighty different um sleeve with an elasticated cuff and I made the skirt just below the knee to make it quite wintry and cosy. But when I finished the garment it just didn't feel like me. When I put it on I felt like the combination of the below the knee, the long sleeves and the large scale print, it just felt like it was wearing me and a bit too much on me. So I thought I really love the fabric, I really love the honeycomb dress pattern, I don't want this dress to go to waste, what can I do to make it feel more me and make me get more wear out of it. So what I did was a couple of simple changes. The first thing I did was to cut off the sleeves and turn it into a short sleeve dress, which is a really simple change, but just took a bit less fabric and just made it feel a little less overwhelming on my frame. And then I also, similar to the estuary skirt, just chopped off the skirt a little bit. This time I just took it from below the knee to above the knee. So I only took off maybe three or so inches, but it made all the difference. And it now feels so much more comfy for me to wear and I can really enjoy the print without feeling like it's wearing me now. So I'll put up a picture of the dress before, again, so you can see what it looked like before I upcycled it, and then after. And I just reached this dress a lot more now, and it is quite a cosy fabric, but in winter it's perfect with the short sleeves. I just pop a cardigan on over the top, add a pair of black tights and black boots, and it still works really well for winter, even though it's a little bit shorter on the leg and short sleeved. But yeah, I found it was a really successful re refashion or upcycle. And yeah, just reach for it a lot, bit, a lot more now. And I'm glad I was able to sort of salvage it and turn in something I do love a lot more now. So those are three of my previous upcycling projects. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about them and that they might have given you some ideas or inspiration if you're thinking of trying a hand at a bit of upcycling yourself. But I'll move on now to talking a bit more about what I've got planned for Sew Upcycle 22. And I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into this challenge. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And what I'd like to do for my Sew Upcycle 22 project is another refashioning type project. So similar to the estuary skirt and the honeycomb dress, I'd like to take something else from my handmade wardrobe that I'm not really reaching for and have a good look at it and think about how I can make it work better and how I can adjust it and upcycle it to turn it into a much more wearable garment. So I'm really looking forward to what I've got planned. And what I'd like to do is to alter a dress that I made using this pattern here, which is another Cocoa Crafts pattern, funnily enough. This one is the plum dress pattern. And it's another pattern I really love by Cocoa Crafts. It's a woven dress pattern with a gathered skirt. And it's got a quite a loose or baby doll smock style fit. It's got a neckline that's finished with bias binding, which I always think is a really nice finish. It's got a button down back. And it's got slightly dropped shoulders and you can either make a wintry version like this one with a longer sleeve or this cute summery version with this little ruffle around the sleeve. And this is the version that really appealed to me when I first got this pattern. I thought it was really cute with this ruffle. And I've made two versions of this pattern. And the first version I made is one that I reach for a lot and I wear a lot in summer and I really love. My first version I made in a um, royal blue double gauze fabric. And I think it worked really well for this pattern because the double gauze has quite a lot of body, so it shows off the lovely sleeve ruffle. And also the plain fabric again shows off the details. And I had a bit of fun with my first version. I added on pink buttons down the back, so sort of pop against the blue. And I'll pop a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I really enjoy wearing it. It feels really me, and I love that version. So I decided to go ahead and make another version. Again, I'm using the sleeve ruffle um, style this one here because I really love this version but I decided to try it in a different fabric in a viscose fabric and my second version is the one I'd like to refashion because it's one I don't reach for and it doesn't seem to work on me and it just doesn't feel the same when I put it on as my first version I made. So the second version I made, the one I want to refashion, I made in a viscose fabric that I originally got I think from Sew Me Sunshine quite a while ago and I had it in my stash for a while and I wasn't really sure what to do with it and then I thought about making it into a plum dress and I'll show you the fabric, it's a really pretty one I think. So it's this lovely viscose fabric, it's quite nice and um, quality, it's opaque with this black base and this really pretty floral print on it, really pretty colours I loved, sort of purples and pale yellows and a pink colour. So this is my um, second plum dress that I made and for this version I pretty much made it the same as my first version. Um, it's got the buttons down the back and I went for these little cute little yellow buttons to tie time with the yellow flowers 
it's got the little sleeve ruffle. I also added on waist ties, which I did for my first version as well, to cinch it in a little bit around the waist. And actually the plum dress waist sits a little bit higher, so I guess it's somewhere, maybe more around like a, somewhere between an empire line and a natural waist, so it's a higher waisted garment. See, so yeah, this is my version. It's got pockets, sleeve ruffles, but when I put it on, it just doesn't really feel like me. And I think maybe it's to do with the viscose fabric. Firstly, I guess the busy print means that you can't see the ruffle as well. And maybe the features are a little bit more hidden as well. Like the button down back, it doesn't, you can't see it as well as my other version where it really pops. I think also with the viscose fabric, the drape fit, the skirt just doesn't sit as nicely. Um, yeah, it just, just doesn't quite work as well as my first version. I haven't found myself reaching for it. So I'll put a picture of it so you can see what it looks like on. I just feel like the waistline isn't quite right for me in this fabric. And yeah, just I just don't reach for it at all. And I've got other summer dresses that I'd choose over this one. So I thought since it's such lovely fabric and there's some such lovely details to it, I'd like to sort of salvage it somehow and turn it into something that I could get more wear out of. So I'm not going to share too many details. Now. I've got a few ideas of what I might like planned. But I want to go and have a little bit of a play with it and see what works. There's definitely going to be some unpicking involved and some chopping involved. Um, but yeah, I've got a few ideas and I'm hoping I'll be able to turn it into something that I'll get a lot more love out of. I actually had a look in my fabric suitcase and found I got a bit of this fabric left over as well. So I've got a bit of fabric to play with to see what I want to do. But I'm really looking forward to the challenge. I'm going to go and try it on again and look at it really critically and think of what I can do to be able to turn it into something so I can really enjoy this fabric and some of the lovely details. And I'm not sure which details I'm going to keep at the moment. So anyway, that is my plan for Salt Cycle 22. This garment is going to get refashioned. It's not going to be the plum dress anymore. It's going to be a plum dress mixed up with something else, but I'm not sure quite what yet. See, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. I'm really looking forward to having a bit of play with this dress. And I'm going to be revealing my garment on Instagram on the 31st of October, along with everyone else, using the hashtag SupCycle22. And I'll also be sharing on YouTube as well. So if you're not on Instagram, then don't worry, I'll be talking about what I've done and sharing some after pictures as well as the before pictures again on here too. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. So thank you very much, Becky and Karen, for asking me to be involved. I can't wait to see what everyone else is planning too. I think there's going to be a lot of ideas and inspiration coming out of this challenge. So if you're getting involved, then I wish you happy upcycling too. So thank you very much for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then please do hit the subscribe button for more sewing inspiration ideas, pattern hacks, sewing plans, fabric hauls, and all that sort of thing. And if you press the bell icon as well, that means you'll be notified when I bring my future videos out. So thanks again for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye.